2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. All scripture. Verse 15 in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. Rightly dividing the word of truth means that you allot in Scripture the dispensation for what it is written on to. What do I mean? During the Garden of Eden. They were not saved by grace through faith. You, you are, those people who uh, teach that are a bunch of idiots, okay? Anyone who reads the account of the Garden of Eden will see clearly that it is by works, okay? It is works, all right? The second dispensation, the patriarchal period, similar to the dispensation that we have today, the differences are, number one, no death, burial, and resurrection or bloodshed on the cross, no permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Lord is that Spirit. And number three, there was a aspect of required action or and or obedience. Because if Noah didn't do that, things would have been different. If Abram didn't go like he was commanded, things would have been different, okay? So that is the differing things between the patriarchal period and the dispensation that we have today, okay? Under the law, faith and works, the works of law. The law is not a faith. What was your faith in? Your faith was in God that he would honor you by doing what he said according to the law, okay? Then the death, burial, and resurrection happens. The blood shed on the cross, the dispensation that we have today, which is by his grace, through our faith. Okay, the antinomian heretic devil twists it and by faith through grace. Uh, no, it's by his grace through our faith. Okay, our faith. Okay, not implanted like the Calvinist teaches. Okay, after this dispensation, this dispensation will end with the redemption of the purchased possession, the come up hither, then begins the time of Jacob's trouble, which is a reverting back to faith and works. The difference is the death, burial, and resurrection is already there. But remember, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Hebrew, and he's going to allow the Hebraic Jews to bring back animal sacrifices but during the third year somewhere in there he's going to go into that third rebuilt temple the abomination that make it death desolate standing in the place where he ought not you read that in mark and several other places is going to go into that third rebuilt temple and say i am i believe and he's going to have the visage of the roman catholic jesus and then all chadez is going to break loose okay at the end of that second coming the lord jesus christ comes back with us his, his body, okay? He comes back with us, all right, to establish the kingdom of heaven, which is the thousand-year reign of Christ Jesus on the earth, ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. During that time period, it is going to be by works. Why? Because within the Garden of Eden, similarly, they're going to be able to see God. You're going to be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the throne, okay? That's the sixth dispensation. Okay, now Christ Jesus never leaves the earth. Once he's here, then he's here to stay. But what happens is, at the end of the thousand years, Satan is let loose from his pit and goes out to deceive the nations. And then that's when Gog and Magog happen. Then the Lord is going to destroy Satan and cast him into the lake of fire. Hence, sin will be eradicated. Because remember, during the kingdom of heaven, there is still going to be sin. That The kingdom of heaven, which is all works, is when the Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine. Okay, It's not doctrine for today. It's not salvific doctrine for us today. There is instruction and righteousness in the Sermon on the Mount. Absolutely. Doctrine, no. 
And then, of course, with the abolition of sin, sin is done away, cast into the lake of fire, death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. These people are still going to be burning for eternity in the lake of fire. The final and seventh dispensation. Okay? With no sin. Okay? All right? That, that's just a basic rundown of the seven dispens dispensations. Okay? All right? That is what I teach. In your authorized version of the scriptures, all ver again in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Stop. Scripture. Scripture. You, you see this right here? See that? You can see that. This is scripture. This is scripture. This is inspired. Within the scripture itself, there are references onto other verses within the scripture. Okay? Paul does this. He, he will make reference onto other scriptures. He will quote other scriptures. The Lord himself will uh, quote Isaiah, other scripture. So within the scripture, right here, this is what's uh, inspired by God. This, the actual scripture. Okay, so within the scripture itself, there are cross references on to other scriptures. Okay, even devils know that one. Okay, even devils are aware of that. But see, this is what has inspired the scripture right here. Okay, see this in the middle there? Those are cross references. Those, dear friends, are not, are not inspired. They're not. How many of you now, it depends on your set of scriptures. It does. Uh, myself and Brother Alexander B. Hartley, this day, before this video was even, uh, before I even turned it on, Brother Alexander B. Hartley and myself, we are both aware of this, and so are several other saints. Uh, most of the saints that we speak with and whatnot are aware of this. That cross-references within the set of scriptures differ. For example, okay, this is, this, this, this <laughs> is a Bollinger um, set of scriptures, which uses the authorized version, okay? But the Bollinger, okay, um, has something totally different uh, for a verse than, say, the Thompson chain. And also the Schofield, okay? Sometimes they are differing, but what we have seen, especially with what we are going to be looking at, a lot of the scriptures will, the people who like, you know, of Schofield and the Thompson Chain, even some of the Cambridge, okay, will use the same references. But you got to remember something. The references are not inspired. What am I talking about? Turn to Proverbs. The proverb for today. Today is the 11th. Check this out. Dear friend, dear saint, dear saint, cross-references within, see, like, see here, the cross-reference within the middle, they are helpful. Yes, they are. They are helpful. They're not inspired. Inspired cross-references, like we've made mention about how Paul quotes the Old Testament, same with our Lord, Father, Jesus Christ, okay, those are found within the text itself, which is inspired. Okay. Now, if someone, you know, with something like that, want to put it into the cross-reference, that's a different story. But the, you got to be mindful of these things, brethren. Okay, this, the text of Scripture of the authorized version is inspired by God. Perfect. Inerrant. Amen. 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 Watch it with these cross-references. How many of you check your Scriptures? Okay, if you got several brother, you do. Know who, you're talk, who I'm talking about, your brother. Check your references about Matthew 24 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Or Matthew 24 and 1 Corinthians 15. How many of you in your sets of scripture, check. Pause the video and check. For an example, that might not be in yours. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Or it might be on another one that you might have. I have seen, so has several other brethren, in authorized version, 
the cross references in some of them they will take Matthew 24 and try to tie in Matthew 24 with 1 Corinthians 15 why is that significant what are they doing they're blending the redemption of the purchased possession which Paul talks about okay for this dispensation the redemption of the purchased possession the catching away they are trying to blend that with Matthew 24 with the second coming What does that mean? The cross references, dear friend, even in Schofield, even in Schofield, okay, the cross references themselves don't gender onto rightly dividing. Check your scriptures. I've seen them in several sets of scriptures. My brother even is like, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm here reading this in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. They're, they're tying it into Matthew 24. Same they will do also with 2 Thessalonians. Okay, chapter 2. Ty See, that's dangerous. Because Matthew 24 is not the redemption of the purchased possession talked about in 1 Corinthians 15. Also in 2, uh, 2 Thessalonians. Okay? It's not. What they are doing with the cross-references are blending them together. Not rightly dividing in the cross-references. That's why, dear brethren, you take the cross-references with a grain of salt. Okay? Proverbs 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth soul is wise. Now, in this, um, uh, these are very small. In this, yes, <laughs> this one does the same thing. And this one does the same thing. You got a set of scriptures? I hope you do. You're reading along with me. Check your cross reference if you got one. Does it start with James 5 20 and then go to 1 Corinthians 9, 19 on to 22? It does, doesn't it? Does not here? It does in the Schofield, but they add Daniel 12, 3. Okay? The, uh, the Bollinger one, it just uh, f uh, focuses in on um, uh, winneth, catcheth, or taketh, as he tries to do. And the, um, the uh, Thompson chain only mentions Daniel. And you might be thinking, well, okay, let's see these. Go to, now, this is very important, all right? The text itself of Scripture is inspired. These cross-references are. Now, what these people who gave these cross-references are working off of what? Winneth souls. Soul winning, okay? Soul winning. That's what they're working off of. Prove it to you in the cross-references, absolutely. James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 20. How many of you remember these uh, Baptists go out soul winning? Hmm? Soul winning, conversion are two different things. They really are. But, James 5, 20. Okay? Now that's the, the order in which these are referenced is significant. They are. Because the very first reference for uh, Proverbs 30, uh, Proverbs 11 verse 30 in this set of scriptures is James 5.20. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. I forgot to turn off the ringer of my phone. Okay? What's significant about that? The book of James, by the way, is written to who? James 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes. Not the ones, that ten, the 10 that are, in, that are in England. Stupid. The twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Twelve tribes. This is our brother James who um, had the us and them mentality 
uh, that is talked about in which we discuss in uh, the video that about Acts 21, which will be in the description box for you to reference. Okay, the Book of James is clearly written onto the Hebraic Jewish people, and when you read James chapter two, James chapter two, verse fourteen. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? Now, see, dear friend, here's the problem. Okay? Uh, here's the problem. <laughs> All right? Paul and stupid head Christy Burke pointed this out. Several atheists have pointed this out. Several so-called Christians. That one Doug guy uh, who did the video on... Uh, on the channel here even pointed this out. There is a clear contradiction between what James says in that verse and what Paul preached. Because what? Hey! You antinomianist! Does our faith save us today? It's by his grace to our faith, but go with me here. We are saved, according to the antinomianist, by our faith first and his grace. It's scripturally by his grace to our faith. But, but, okay. Paul preaches contrary to that. Because according to Paul, yeah, faith saves you, right? Right? It's by his grace through our faith. The antinomian, antinomianist, whatever, heretic, free grace, pond scum. Twist it. We proved that in yesterday's video. Okay? Or no, Monday's video. Okay? They twist it. But, Paul preached, you know, faith saves, right? But James asked the question, can faith save him? When you read, and video for James 2 will be in the description box, the fruit of not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? James here is preaching faith and works. Okay. Paul clearly preached by grace through faith. James is clearly. Stupid head Christy Burke got that. Atheists in general get that. Muslims get that. But the antinomianist doesn't. Woohoo! <laughs> the Catholic doesn't. Woohoo! What's the difference? There's no contradiction if you rightly divide. The book of James is written for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble, just like the book of Hebrews. Because people who like to say you can lose your salvation today like to go to that thing in the Hebrews about how they can lose their salvation, but yet they say you can get it back today when in the book of Hebrews you can't get it back. Why? Because the book of Hebrews is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. See, rightly dividing, dear friend. Okay? You understand? Alright? So the book of James is the time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Yes, there are doctrinal things that do coincide for today, yes. But in the whole, in its entirety, the book of James is not written to us today. It's written to the Hebraic Jews. It's written for us. And see, this is something that you guys have to get through your thick heads. Okay? Scripture is written for us. Amen! 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 Hallelujah! But it's not all written to us. You have to understand that. Okay? When you get involved with these antinomianist twits, we like to blend everything together, but yet say they're rightly dividing. You, you fall in, you, God's ashamed of you if you do not rightly divide the word of truth. So, in the reference to Proverbs 11, verse 30, they come first to James. Now, Proverbs 30 was written in context under the law, which was what? Faith and works. James, written to the Hebraic Jewish people, during the time of Jacob's trouble, which will be a reverting back to a form of the law. Why do you say form? Because the death, burial, and resurrection has already happened. Okay? 
death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross has already happened. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the body of Christ is not going to be on the earth. The third temple is going to be rebuilt, and they're going to reinstitute the animal sacrificial system. Okay? Until that man of sin, who's going to be a Hebrew, Satan is going to have to become what he hates the most, the Hebraic Jewish people, in order to deceive people. Okay? All right? So, if in the reference, look at the reference again. Okay? Look at the reference again. Okay? It starts with James 5.20. Okay? Now, if they would have left it like that, then okay. Then okay. Why? Because Proverbs 11 was written under the law. Okay? There's a myriad of instruction and righteousness in the Proverbs. Amen, amen. Not that, not, we're not talking about that. But see, what will happen is... If someone is going to base their thought upon what is given in the references, they might be deceived. Now, in Daniel, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, go there, of course, you have to see this. You have to see this. Okay? Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Again, the context of Daniel chapter 12, okay? It's in context to what? All right? Time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right? And also into the oncoming kingdom of heaven. All right? Daniel 12 is not written in any context for us today. But cross-referencing it with the time of Jacob's trouble, obviously, and also referencing onto the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. But in verse 3... Daniel 12, verse 3, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Okay? Go ahead and read the context on your own time. Now see, those are Old Testament references. And in James, in context, is under the law. Okay? A very a, a form of it meaning because the death, burial, and resurrection happened. That changed everything. Okay? All right? So if they would have left, even if, if, if it were Daniel and James 5, 20, okay. Okay. But they added. Right now, we'll check the reference again. They added 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 on to 22. And here is where the... Subtle deception can have can happen. The it's obvious when you look at it that they are working off of when is souls. How many of you are aware of the Baptists, like that so-called Stephen Anderson, that sodomite? You know, you go out soul winning. Jerk Hiles was big for that. Go out soul winning. Go out, and what would happen? They would say stuff to you. If you don't go out soul winning, what? What do they say? You got their blood on your hands. Aha! Now we're going to go to Ezekiel 2, where they will go to that if you don't witness, then you got their blood on your hands. It's your fault. Look at me. Come here. You know what that is? That's a work. That's a work. Hey, you are antinomianist pond scum. Even you got to admit that. That's a work. Hmm. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 on to 22. <laughs> For though I be free from all men, Yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law. Not, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. We've addressed that this very week. With Monday's video. I think it was Monday's video. 
yesterday, I don't think it was, but that both will be in the description box for you. That I might gain them that are without law. Why are they going to this? Gain the more, verse 19. Gain the Jews. Verse 20. Verse 21. That I might gain. Verse 22, though. Verse 22. See, what they are intuiting is that Paul took it upon himself to save souls, to win souls. But see, verse 22 is very important. And one way, one way ties it all up into a neat little package for us to understand. See, if you go off of the cross-references of what they're implying to you, well then, hey, I guess God has a gun held to your head, forcing you to go out there to win souls, because if you don't, there blood's on your hands. And then I guess you can also tie into it that it's, it's not your faith, but it's actually, it's actually Jesus Christ's faith itself that is in you. What a, what a stupid, wicked heresy that is. <laughs> Scott, the Lord rebuke you, you wicked, foul devil. Okay? <laughs> but he, he, he's just going off of Calvinist doctrine. Okay? If it is the Lord's faith that we actually have, the Lord himself, his actual faith in us, why do we sin? <laughs> Verse 22. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. There it is again. But I am made all things to all men. Ah, right there. That I might by all means save some. Of course, Paul's not doing the saving. The Lord's saving by grace through faith. But I am made all things. The Lord sent Paul. The Lord orchestrated the circumstances. The Lord was the one. It's like, hey, Paul, go here. Do that. Do this. Paul could have refused. Would have made his life uh, pretty challenging. Because God, remember, is not holding a gun to our head, forcing us to do it. God never worked like that. Never. Nor will he. Nor will he. You gotta remember those of you who point to Pharaoh. Pharaoh already made his choice. The Egyptians, uh, who are likened onto a uh, type of the world for us today for our instruction and righteousness, they've already made their choice. And once you've made your choice, the Lord will help you along in it. Okay, you have to remember that. Paul, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. The Lord was the one who orchestrated it. The Lord's like, go here. You can read that. It's like the Holy Ghost suffered them not to preach to a certain people. But then the Lord showed Paul in a vision or a dream or whatever. It's like, hey, go here. It's like, and he went. The Lord was the one who's like, go here, go here, do that, do that, do that, do this. Okay? Not, not at gunpoint. Okay? We have free will. All right? You've got to remember that. But see, someone who doesn't know about that, someone who is not taught to rightly divide the word of truth, they will come to those references in Proverbs 11, verse 30, and they will go to that, and it starts with James. James 5. That talks about witnessing, and you'll cover a multitude of sin, faith, and works. And then they go to 1 Corinthians 9 here, verses 19 on to verse 22, and then because of something in verse 30 in Proverbs 11, and they are led on with James 5.20, then they're, without knowing about rightly dividing the word of truth, they're going to intuit. That's all. And then, and then, and then one of these guys, one of these Baptist guys, okay, hey, you're Baptist, okay, if you're one of these Andersonites, you know, with his flavor of antinomianism, okay, the Lord rebuke you. You can go straight to hell, which you probably don't believe in. But in Ezekiel 3, you know, God go out and win souls. Ezekiel 3, 17 on to 21. 
son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning for me, from me. Now, today, for our instruction in righteousness, the saint, yes, to, to warn them through his word. But is it a matter of salvific importance? Is it a requirement for your salvation today? No. No, it is not. If you decide to just sit on your hands, on your duff all day, and do nothing, your fruit's going to stink. You're going to have no rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Lord is, you know, put you on the shelf. Okay, stuff like that. Your fruit, your testimony, your witness is going to be hampered. Okay? If you decide to just sit there on your duff and do nothing. Okay? All right? And remember, in Ephesians chapter 2, we have been saved, called on to good works, not for salvation, but as ambassadors for Christ. Okay? You have to remember that. But see, someone looking at those references, not being made aware of rightly dividing the word of truth, and then you come across someone, you got to go out there and win souls. They come here. How many of you have experienced this? Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor spake, speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. You mean if I'm not out witnessing, their blood's on my hands? Under a dispensation of faith of war and works, before the death, burial, and resurrection, without an eternal, without the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, dwelling in you permanently? Yeah. Because that wasn't there under the law. There was faith and works. There was no permanent seal of the Holy Ghost as there is today. During the time of Jacob's trouble, the only ones who are going to be sealed are the 144,000 Hebraic Jews. Okay? Everyone else. <laughs> Verse 19. Yet, if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. Now, this is a very important verse. He shall die in his sin, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Yes. Or the law. Thy soul in whose hands? Today, in this dispensation, our souls are in his hands. See, under the law, there was no eternal security. None. The Lord... The Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord could dwell in a believer under the law. Absolutely. But that circumcision, which is a permanent residence of the Lord Jesus Christ, that circumcision made without hands on a permanent basis wasn't there. That's why if they ate pork, the Lord could depart from them. That's why if they touched the dead body, the Lord could depart from them. You read about that in, in the Old Testament quite a bit. The Lord departed from Saul. The Lord departed from Sa uh, not Samuel, um, um, Samson. Okay? The Lord left Hezekiah to, so that Hezekiah could know the pride of his heart. Okay? You read about that quite a bit under the law in the Old Testament. It's not that way in this dispensation today. You go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of Him. You call upon His name. He saves you. You're eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. Unlike under the law. And see, those cross references could lead someone into thinking, and especially then you run into a Baptist or a Pentecostal who comes to you preaching work salvation, all the while saying, just believe and receive. But yet, if you're not out there winning souls for your church building, you got, your, you got their blood on your hands. But verse 19 tells you, but thou hast delivered thy soul. No eternal security. 
Our souls are in the hand of the Lord. Eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Which wasn't there under the law. Don't believe these antinomianists, nomiest, whatever they're called, jerks. They're lying to you. Some of them are outright stupid. Let's continue. Verse 20. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sins, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hands. At thine hand. Nevertheless, uh, we're just reading the verse 21. Excuse me. Just to verse 21. I wrote that down. Okay. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that he that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he was warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. Faith and works. Now see, tying that in with James chapter 5.20, and even in Daniel, yes. Putting in 1 Corinthians 9, no! No. Now see, you got to understand, the reference, the reference in Proverbs 11, there, go back there, verse 30, what obviously is the focal point for the reference? Obviously, as we have seen, obviously, winneth souls. That's the, uh, uh, the Thompson there uh, also makes a reference onto the tree of life. The Thompson references, which uh, reference the tree of life and Daniel uh, 12, 3, fine. Fine. Okay, that, that's fine. It stays within the parameter of the, under the law. But see, putting in 1 Corinthians, and then you just happen to run into some putts, uh, whoever out there, it's like, you got to be out there winning souls. If you ain't winning souls, their blood's on your hands. It's work. We are saved on two good works. Not to be saved or stay saved. Okay, their blood is not on our hands. <laughs> it isn't today. Unlike under the law. But see, now, you can, you know... 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Are these people purposely doing this? The way to hell is paved with good intentions. Again, you Christians are not taught to rightly divide. When you hear rightly divide, say from an antinomianist, okay, these free gracers, when they say to you, rightly divided, they are not talking about salvation changing in the dispensation as it does. They are telling you that God's grace changes, not salvation, or how one is made right. God's grace is in every dispensation, or we would go up like a puff. Okay? It's not His grace that changes. Grace simplified is unmerited favor. The greater blessing the lesser. What changes is how one is made right and or is saved within the dispensation. Those cross-references are not intuiting, rightly dividing. Because they are blending James 5, some Daniel 12, 3. If those would have been the only ones, then fine. They're in context accurate. But they throw in 1 Corinthians, blending them together. And then, like I said, you run into a... a hey, if you're a Baptist, okay, I've heard about this from the Baptists and also from the uh, Pentecostals and, of course, the Jehos and the Morons, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons, okay, they're saving their souls because that's their works, you know. The Jehos, they got their list that they got to mark off. You go here, go here, you know. All right? But, you know, and you find these references. Authorized version. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. Again, saint, brother, sister, this, the text, 
is inspired. These ain't. Again, check your check your references about Matthew chapter twelve, uh, Matthew chapter twenty-four. Do they tie in First Corinthians fifteen? Huh? Second Thessalonians chapter two? Some of them do. What are they doing? They're blending the second coming and the redemption of the purchased possession together. Matthew twenty-four has nothing to do with the, with the redemption of the purchased possession. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. He who endures to the end, the same will be saved. You and I today, we don't have to endure to the end to be saved. We go the way of the cross. We go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and fear of him. Call upon his name. He saves us, seals us. Once saved, always saved. We don't have to endure to the end of anything. But you are going to have to endure in the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, in some of the cross-references and some of the sets of scriptures, they blend them together. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. You Christians are not taught to rightly divide into the word of truth. Now, their intention might be, well, just give them cross-references. But the way to hell is paved with good intentions. If your references, remember, again, the text is inspired. The text. The cross-references. Cross-references are helpful. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're not inspired. They're not. Hence, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Hmm. Verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but, uh, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Hmm. Uh, let's read verses 1 on to verse 4. Then we'll, then we'll stop. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, ministry of reconciliation, which we all have, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Now, one of the guys, you know, Cambridge, Cambridge is one of the best sets of scriptures you're ever going to get. Yes, amen. The Elan also is very good as well. The point of this video is to tell you Cross-references can be helpful. Don't put your full stock in the cross-references. Again, brother, sister, Christian, this, the actual text itself, is what is inspired, which is preserved, given by inspiration, perfect. The text, the cross-references are not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. And you blending what we just looked at together, whether their intention was to, intentional to deceive or not, that's dishonest. It's dishonest, no matter what, how you slice it. Same way with trying to, to blend Matthew 24 with 1 Corinthians 15, and or 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, okay? It's dishonest. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. And you also got to remember too, uh, also too, a lot of the newer editions of the authorized versions that are being produced, the cross-references are also computer-generated. Do you know that? You know some of the authorized version of the scriptures that you get that come from communist China, the cross-references are generated by a computer? You did, did you know that? But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, 
lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves for Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Cross-references are very helpful. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. I myself, I got one of these things, which, uh, you know, which is, for what it is, okay, I, it's, it's decent for what it is. I got one of these, okay, which is he sent nothing but a big um, cross-referencing thing. <laughs> you need a man. See? Look at it, okay? This is, okay. This, however, is a ca uh, Catholic um, Calvinist bent to it. It certainly does. But, you know, cross-references. This is not inspired. Okay, this is not inspired. This is all cross-references. Okay, as you see. Okay, um, this is this is helpful. I don't use, I just had to wipe off a lot of dust off of it because I don't use it anymore. I don't. Why? Because cross-references Unless they are in the text of Scripture, themselves are not inspired. Helpful? Amen? Amen. Yes, they are helpful. And yes, they can point to the truth. Absolutely. But as we see, that little leaven, that little dishonesty, at its core, not intuiting, not Involving rightly deny, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth, and a babe who's never heard of it of rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, and they get and one of these Christian antinomianists or whatever gets a hold of them, and they deceive them in what rightly dividing actually is. Or worse, you get a, a, a Presbyterian. Uh, yea, hath God said, well, the, the King James, uh, they've done all this. It's not, you know, you need an, an NIV. That's just that's a very quick little video for you today. Just a quick little video. It'll be references for you in the description box. Just wanted to make you aware of this. The authorized version is the perfect and errant given by inspiration, word of God. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Text. Not the cross-references. If you have an authorized version without cross-references, and just allowing the Lord and the text itself, the scripture itself, to be the cross-reference, but then again, like I said, if you, I'm not going to get rid of that. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to get rid of the Elan. No way. And like I said, some of the time, more often than not, I'd say about 7 out of 10, the cross-references are decent. They are in your authorized version, depending on which one you got. Meaning a Thompson chain. Meaning a Cambridge versus a Holman. They have the same text. But the cross-references are different. Unless, like I said, uh, for uh, Proverbs 1130, Cambridge, Church Bible Publishers, um, Schofield, all right? All right? I haven't checked one of the Thomas Nelsons. I haven't checked the Alon. Uh, one of the, not Alon. Or what is it, Alan? The, uh, what, what is this one? Um, Alon. Alon, you know. Okay, that, that one, beautiful, by the way. That's my daily reading scripture. But, um, you know, some of them have the same flow there. Does that mean you discard them? No. Oh. Don't put all your stock or trust in the cross-references. You trust the scripture itself, the text. Cross-references are not inspired. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.